Hello, everyone. This is Old School from WhatTheBuck.net coming to you live from Valrico, Florida. I want to apologize for the latency for this video. Schedules were released last night, and I was in the depths of despair after seeing some of the scheduling decisions and was not capable of putting together a mild YouTube video about it. Now, you may think I was in the depths of despair because we have a very tough schedule. In fact, if you look at ESPN.com today, uh, when you look at the ratings of the schedules, uh, our compatriots, the Carolina Panthers got screwed a little bit worse than us, as did the Falcons, but the NFC South in general took in the shorts, having three of the worst five schedules in the league. Uh, the Dolphins got it uh, overall worse, uh, and then the Patriots were there in the middle at number three, but the Buccaneers came in with the fifth toughest schedule by uh, win-loss percentage in the league. Now, that's one thing. I mean, you're going to have tough schedules. This kind of thing happens, right? No big deal. You deal with it. You move forward. You try and do the best you can. Sometimes you can have an easy schedule, sometimes you can have a tough schedule. At the end of the day, you got to play when they blow the whistle. But when you look at some of the other nuances in the schedule, we have no back-to-back -back home games at all during the season, which is not great. Uh, you could argue that we do have back-to-back uh, -back home games in Week 6 and Week 7 with the Panthers October 18th and the Patriots October 25th, except for our home game with the Patriots is going to be played in London, uh, which sucks. So not only do season ticket holders get screwed out of a home game, uh, but the team does. Now, fortunately, they did put the bye after that so the team can kind of recover from going overseas. Uh, and then we come back and play the Packers at home uh, so we don't have to travel yet again. But in general, uh, from a Bucks fan perspective, the schedule kind of sucks. Now, the upside to having a tough schedule is if you do perform well, people can't take that from you. They can't say, oh, you did well because you had a crap schedule. I mean, we open up with the Cowboys. We get T.O. and the Bills. Then the, Red, the, the Giants, the Redskins, the Eagles, the Panthers, the Patriots. You notice I haven't named any tomato can teams. I mean, you could argue the Bills may be a tomato can, but you know they've been putting up pretty decent numbers the last couple of years. They just haven't put it all together. So we come back after the bye. We have the Packers, the Dolphins, and then we get our division games all clustered together. So in our last six games, four of the six are division games, and four of the six are on the road. So last year, where we thought we had a good end stretch, we were going to be able to knock out those last four games because they were against weak teams, and then we choked. This year, we've got that painful schedule where we got away at Atlanta, away at Carolina, home versus the Jets, away in Seattle, away against the Saints, and then home versus the Falcons to wrap things up. We have no primetime game scheduled. Uh, we have no fancy game scheduled. We have no marquee players, so apparently no one wants to see us on television anymore. Um, my personal beef is I've gone the last two years in a row to New Orleans for the road trip uh, and uh, had planned to go this year as well as the Seattle game. They managed to put those uh, bookended around Christmas, which is outstanding, which means that I will be able to go to neither one of those away games uh, because of Christmas festivities here in the uh, old school household. So not only am I bitter because of the schedule in general, uh, but I'm bitter personally because now I have to figure out if I'm going to go to away games or not because there's no way I'm going to get to go to the two that I wanted to. So as a Bucks fan, you look at this and you say, well, you know, we've got a totally new front office, totally new coaching staff, a bunch of new talent. Unproven, lots of holes that we've got to address in the draft, which is going to lead me to the next segment on this video. Uh, and we've got a hellacious schedule to have to contend with. But you know what? Sometimes those kind of challenges are what you need as a coach and as a leader to rally the troops, to say, listen, guys, we're not going to have anything given to us. right? People are already counting us out. They were counting the team out before the schedule came out. And now, looking at the schedule, I mean, a lot of people, I think the, the article by, by Roy Cummings in the Tampa Bay Online today was talking about how, you know, coming into this on paper, this looks like it might be an 8-8 eight and eight team. Uh, but now looking at the schedule, that's optimistic. Well, you know, Mr. Krasnicki from 10, 10 a.m. has us going 0-7 before the bye, but I think he said the same thing last year. Uh, it's always easy to discount uh, teams. But w if one thing is proven correct is, uh, you know, if, if people were that good at predicting it, there'd be a lot more millionaires made in Vegas uh, and a lot fewer bookies. Uh, generally speaking, the bookies are right. So the other point I had was I had a question that came in from, I believe it was Yankee 6192 about the draft. We'll be talking a little bit more about that this week on our Thursday night show at 7 o'clock. That's tomorrow night at 7 o'clock at www.whatthebuck.net. Please feel free to come on over and participate with us in the chat room. Bucks typically take a best player available draft strategy, which is probably what we'll employ this year. Uh, there's been a lot of scuttle about whether we would take Freeman and some people that have uh, commented on the YouTubes about not wanting to talk quarterback noise anymore, and I can appreciate that because to be quite honest, I don't want to talk about it anymore either. I don't want us to see us draft Freeman. I don't even want to see us draft Sanchez or Stafford, though neither one of those guys should be available when we come up at 19. Uh, when we come up at 19, uh, our boy Admire, the Danish sensation, our Danish Mel Kuyper, 
had predicted early that we would get Vontae Davis, that Vontae Davis would slip to us and we would snag him. Uh, there's obviously a lot of requests and need for defensive tackle help, but the big names on the defensive tackle side, like Raji, uh, will probably be gone by the time we get to 19, even with the scuttle about drugs. So I do look to see the Bucks take defense with that 19 pick. My preference would be to see us trade down if possible. Hopefully one of these guys uh, that we aren't interested in, whether it be a quarterback or other skill position, will slip far enough that a team wants to move up to 19 the way Jacksonville moved up last year, and we can get a late first round and maybe a, a later mid-second round or something like that for our first pick. We have a lot of needs on the defensive side of the ball, and I think there's some some nuggets that we could grab. And I mentioned this guy before, but Ron Brace out of Boston College is a big, beefy son of a gun, and I think we could pick him up in the mid to late second round, maybe third round, and uh, help out our defensive tackle situation. But Vontae Davis is what our Danish Mel Kuyper says we're going to go for. Looking at the pre-draft boards, I don't know that he's going to be available, but anything can happen when we hit the draft the 25th. We're going to be live at Raymond James Stadium watching this with a bunch of other Bucks fans. I encourage you to, if you're local, come on out. Uh, hang out with us if you want to. We're going to be over there. Uh, if you can't make it out to the uh, draft day party at Raymond James, make sure you're glued to the television set. We'll probably try and YouTube as fast as we can about what's going on and what the Bucks have done. We've got a number of picks, but there's going to be a lot of people that we get picked up that we're going to be like, ah, who the hell is this? Because uh, we're, we're picking pretty late. We've got our one and our three as it sits, and then we wait a long time before we start drafting again. So the Bucks have their uh, work cut out for them. Coach Morris and the front office and the team is going to have to really pull things together here in the training uh, training camp. Uh, to, to try and get ready for a schedule that, to be honest, is very, very tough. But uh, as a Bucks fan, and as a fan in general, that doesn't bother me. We'll deal with it. Uh, those schedule guys, I saw a special on NFL.com, or NFL Total Access today, 724 trillion uh, permutations uh, for scheduling. This is obviously not an easy job. Not everyone's going to be happy. But it is what it is. We'll deal with the London game, and uh, we'll get through it. So that's my report, guys. Again, sorry it's late. Hopefully it was useful for you. Feel free to rate it, let people know about it, and uh, hopefully we'll see you Thursday night on the show at whatthebuck.net. Thanks again. Take care.